live from beautiful Tram Stop 7 in Grand Prix City, Melbourne, it's in pit lane tonight with our special guests. Hosts of 31 Questions, David M. Green. Music from Animal Hands and from the Follies of Youth, Tony Avard. But now, the host of our show, from beyond the suburban curtain, weighing in at 233 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, Brett Ramsey! Thank you for that spontaneous, completely unrehearsed and very sincere burst of totally synthetic applause. Yes, well, welcome to a special edition of In Pit Lane as we say farewell to the age of entitlement. And well, I'm going to miss the age of entitlement. I don't know. Phil, are you going to miss the age of entitlement? I never reached the age of entitlement. What, what did we actually get in the age of entitlement? Uh, Do you remember? The age of it, well, we got entitlements. We also got um, fruit. We got fruit. I, what really gets me about the age of entitlement, it'll be just my luck that we get to the end of the age of entitlement and we suddenly find out that there was in fact a list somewhere where there were a whole bunch of things that we were entitled to that we didn't sort of know about. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get to the stage where I'm finding out that, you know, now I find out that we could have what, you know, round the world free flights with Qantas or something. Or, uh, you know, bowls of M&Ms with all the green ones taken out. Exactly. Free hand jobs from Elle McPherson. Any, who knows? But anyway, apparently the age of entitlement is gone, who knows? But um, as they say in the classics, and now for something completely different. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, tonight in a world first in pit lane becomes the first ever weekly motorsport show to have zero motorsport content. No Formula One, no Le Mans, no V8 supercars, no, not even any HQ Holdens. Because tonight we flick the switch to Vaudeville with in pit lane tonight. Later this year, Channel 31 Melbourne celebrates 20 years on air, and during that time, thousands of people from all walks of life have had the opportunity to live out their dreams either in front of or behind the television camera. And for all of those 20 years, RMITV student television has been there. In fact, C31 actually began right here in this very studio. So tonight we thought we'd catch up with the current generation of very talented people doing great things thanks to RMITV. A little later on the show, we're going to catch up with the writer, producer and one of the stars of the original and highly ambitious new web series from RMIT, RMITV. Follies of Youth, and his name is Tony Avard. Let's hear it for Tony. <laughs> of course, over the years, music's played a big part in the history of RMITV with shows like New Here Now, Live Under Melbourne Tonight, Studio A, Live on Bowen, and oh, who could forget Chart Busting 80s? Well, tonight we're going to be joined live in the studio by Melbourne band Animal Hands. <laughs> They're going to be playing a couple of songs for us tonight and in Pit Lane's very own musical director, Manel Lewis, will catch up with the band for a bit of a chat. But our first guest tonight, well, he's a creative and cultural refugee from the bad streets of downtown North Adelaide. As a journalist, you might have read his work in MX, Mamma Mia, The Punch, The Drum, even Popular Science. In radio, he's been through more stations than the 745 from Pakenham to Melbourne, and that includes the City Loop. His web series, Too Easy, was recently shown at the 2014 LA Web Fest, and he's just finished a stint as a writer with Sean McAuliffe's Mad as Hell. But most of you will know him as the host of the popular quiz show 31 Questions, a new series which is starting in June here on C31 Melbourne. So, in case you've missed it though, let's take a look at him in action right now. Yes! It's everyone's time for 31 Questions. How often is the magazine Australian Woman's Weekly published? Exactly. Weekly. We no. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's monthly. False advertising. Yeah, exactly. Why don't they call it Women's Monthly? <laughs> Give a whole new meaning to the term red carpet reporting. I'd certainly read it, David. It sounds like a bloody good magazine. Tell them what they've won, TV's John Blackman. Yes, thank you very much indeed, David. I was just passing by and saw the light on, thought I'd drop in. Bring her the pillowcase. Look at that. Look at that. Don't wash it. Thank you, sir. Do you, uh, do you have a bed? I do have a bed. You, uh... This is going to be my cat bed, though. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome, bearing his voluminous talents, the one and only David M. Green. <laughs> I see you 
you've uh, I see you've come prepared with your own uh, your personalised mug. That's uh, I have. That's very impressive. I have. Although I, I get the feeling just went. Oh my goodness! What's that right there? Oh, look at that! I, look, a spare one. mug. Isn't this wonderful? Yeah, you can have that. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, all I need now is the vodka to go into it. Well, hang on a second. <laughs> there you thank go. You. Dostoevsky. Yeah. Well, now, good. tell us, quiz show, why a quiz show? Well, uh, there they weren't any on Channel 31 at the time. Um, since then, since we, 2010, we started uh, 31 Questions, and now there's been five or six quiz shows, I think. But, so yeah. you're a pioneer. I, I like to think so. Actually, there was another, there was a quiz show before us called Hot Dog with the Lot. You ever remember that one? No, no, I must have missed that. I, I must have been out the night that that was on. Yeah, it was probably on... Maybe I, I think I was home that night, so I did see it. But it was like, who wants to be a millionaire? And instead of like... I do remember it now, yes. Yeah. yes. Instead they of greater increments of money, you want a hot dog and then various toppings on well, the bun. Well, I suppose when you look at it, I mean, that was sort of, you know, My Kitchen Rules way before its time. The combination of, you know, reality television and quiz show and cooking show all in one, all in one show. Once yeah. again, we put, we're pioneers. They're stealing all of our good ideas. What are your favourite quiz shows over the years? I loved Sail of the Century when I was growing up, like Glen Ridge. Uh, I, don't, I was too young to remember Tony Barber, but yeah, Glen Ridge, I used to watch it every night. Um, how much, yeah, of, how it. much of it was the format of, of Sail of the Century and how much of it was just simply being able to hear Pete Smith go, Sail of the Century? Uh, well, I didn't know who Pete Smith was at that point. I didn't know that was a guy. Like, I, I knew the voice, but, like, it wasn't until later where I sort of realised, you know, when Pete Smith was on uh, uh, McAuliffe Tonight, if you remember that, that show when he was the voiceover guy there, and you actually got to see him. I sort of put a face to the name. He's, yeah, also, he's also become quite the cult figure, isn't he? I mean, Tony Martin and Mick Malloy used him a lot over the years, and he's, he's a bit like one of like Bert Newton and those other people, that they sort of, they get to the point where they get so old that suddenly young people go, wow, that guy's cool. Yeah. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for that moment to happen. What, uh, to you? Yeah, I think it's going to be a long time. Well, uh, you keep at it. Well, yeah. I have to. I've got no choice. So what was the idea behind 31 Questions? Because it's not your typical quiz show, is it? It's not your, you know, your standard quiz show. Well, we sort of wanted to do... We, I'm a comedian, so we wanted to do a comedy show that sort of moved to Melbourne from Adelaide because, I mean, facilities are great. They don't have anything like we this. Have, we have electricity in Melbourne. It's oh, aghast. Um, but uh, I wanted to do a comedy show, but they sort of would... RMI TV, Channel 31, they had a few on at the time, but they didn't have any game shows. I thought, you do a game show and make it really funny, that's just as good as a comedy show. In fact, it's probably easier because people are expecting a comedy show to be funny, not expecting a game show to be funny. So it's a little, you know, they're not expecting it to, uh, you know, set the bar a little lower. So, so you don't do this by yourself. We saw other people in there. Who are your, who are your cohorts on 31 Questions? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's obviously me, and uh, there are a couple other people on the show, Anthony McCormack and Sophie Loughran. Uh, Anthony's sort of like the moderator, so um, whenever, uh, you know, someone's broken the rules or something like that, he can throw the book at them. Uh, and, do you uh, actually have a book that you throw? There is. There is a book. It's, it's about that thick. And I wouldn't got... want that thrown at me. I think that sounds dangerous, quite frankly, David. Yeah, well, because it, it's so big, you don't get bruises. It's like the phone book kind of thing. Oh, so it's, it's that sort of thing, you know, like the police sort yeah. of thing. As allegedly, allegedly the police. Yeah. Not that we'd want to get them into any trouble at, trouble at all. So I've seen on your website, on your Facebook page and all the rest, you've got a new series coming up, and you say this will be the last series. Why, how, why is that? Oh, it's, well, uh, we do have a new series coming up, season three. It starts in June sometime. Don't know when exactly. I'll get back to you. Uh, gee, it's just because it's so much work, you know? Um, to, to make this season as, as good as it is, it's just it almost destroyed us all, I think. And... Um, I don't know, just right now I feel like it's probably going to be the last one, but maybe in a few months uh, when we see it go to air and go, oh, yeah, that looks like so much fun. Why don't we do some more of that? Maybe I'll change my mind. But... I've, I've got some bad news for you, David. I've been saying that about Impit Lane yeah. for 19 years now. <laughs> this is always going to be the last season. It's always <laughs> going to be the last show. We're still there. You're going to be my age, you know, because that was your age when we started Impit Lane. So, yeah. Oh my God. David, this is your future. <laughs> I need some more of this. <laughs> yeah, I think we both need mm. some, some more of that. So apart from that, uh, you, you mentioned uh, 
with 30, 31, with th that finishing, would you like to do another television show? I mean, what's the, what's the purpose of doing uh, 31 questions? Is it to move on and hopefully get sort of, you know, fame and, in fame and fortune? Uh, well, yeah, well, in, in, I guess, yeah. I want to do this for a living. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's all well and good doing it for free. But uh, yeah, you got to pay the bills, right? And um, having to, having, doing this for free and then also having to work some other job to be able to do this, it's uh, you know it can get quite tiring. But um, if you can find a way to get paid for doing this, then you sort of kill two birds with one stone. So that would be the ultimate dream. The, the funny thing is, I mean, my, my, you, I, you probably had the same thing. There's a lot of people out there who say, "Oh yeah, so I watch you on television. What do you do with the rest of your week?" Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> we just come in and press a button, and it all sorts of happens. It all happens. It's all done by computers nowadays. In fact, we're not even here. We're over the pub at the moment, enjoying ourselves, having more vodka. Cheers. Yeah. Um, These are just holograms. <laughs> These are just holograms. There. So, what sort of show would you like to do? Ultimately, I mean, let's have a look at you know, sort of you know, down the track. David M. Green has got the his ideal television future. What is it? Well, I always like you know the the Tonight Show. I think that's like the holy grail of. Uh, of TV, you know, because you can do you can do anything with it. You can you can interview people. That's what is where we are right now, isn't it? Where well, you can interview people, you can do sketches, you can you know you can travel with it. You can do like OB uh, outdoor broadcasts in different countries and and stuff. And you can do a quiz segment. It's like it's so versatile. It's like you know all that TV can be. The one thing if you if you do a Tonight Show that you're going to have to d learn to do is throw to a break and that's in fact what we're doing now and I'll show you how we do it. We say you're watching In Pit Lane tonight right here on not Channel 31 on the YouTube channel or wherever the hell else it pops up. We'll be back with more from David M. Green right after this break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. There it is. Great. Welcome back to the Manel, Manel's talking as well. Welcome back to uh, welcome back to this special edition of In Pit Lane. In Pit Lane tonight, our guest is David M. Green from Thirty One Questions. And as we mentioned in the opening of the uh, of the program, you've just finished a stint working as a writer with Sean McAuliffe on Mad as Hell. Um, how did that all happen? Uh, well, basically, I bugged him for about ten years, and uh, then I, I got a job. So yeah, it was uh, it's been a childhood dream. Like uh, uh, Sean McAuliffe was probably. Anyway, he was like a god when I was uh, growing up in Adelaide, and when I found out he was from Adelaide as well, I'm like, wow, you know, if he if he could do it, then if I moved to Melbourne and do it. So he's, he's your it, you sort know. of, yeah, like people ask me the same thing, they say, and I say, well, yeah, because I grew up with Graham Kennedy and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So he's your sort of, you know, the, the person you look up to? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I loved him on Full Frontal, uh, the characters he did, like Milo Kerrigan, Roger Explosion, David McGann, they were always my favourite characters on the show. So yeah. often when you meet your, your heroes and all the rest, it's often it can be quite disappointing. I mean, but you know, did he live up to expectations? Is he a nice guy? Oh, he's a, yeah, lovely guy. The, the day I met him was May 31st, 2004. You remember? Do you know yeah, what time yeah. it was? Yeah, I, I can't tell you that. I'm not, I'm not Oh, yeah, you're not creepy or anything. Yeah, no, no. Oh, not. God, no. no so, so it's almost 10 years ago to the day. Um, I just remember because he came, because uh, we actually went to the same school as each other, uh, oh. Sacred Heart in, in Adelaide. And um, he was the head prefect in 1979. So um, when I was doing my year 12 exams, I'm in the hall that's got those, you know, those honor boards, the sort of wooden yep, yep. with the little gold writing. So I'd be doing my exams. I could see up there 1979 S. McAuliffe next to 2002 Badminton D. Green. Uh, so yeah, he came and did a speech at, at uh, my high school. So that's when I first met him. And uh, yeah, it was the greatest day of my life. It wasn't disappointing at all. So with a show like like Mad as Hell, it's a very topical show. How does the process work, the writing process? Do you get together sort of on a Monday or something and all, all the writers get in and talk about what's coming up? How does, how does that all work? Uh, well, I was, I was there two days a week. I was a casual, but um, they had some full-time writers as well. There was about six of them. And um, they, the full-time writers were there all the time. I was there Mondays and where, uh, Fridays. So... Yeah, we, we, I don't know exactly what happened when I wasn't there, but like I'd come in and you'd just sit down at a computer in the writer's room and you'd start writing stuff. And 
So did you bounce off each other and all, all that? Like, did you sit around like at the big table and do the read-throughs and go, oh, that's funny or that needs work? Or how, how does that work? Because from what I've seen, it works very differently here in Australia than it does in America. In America, it seems to be a much more a team oriented process. Yeah. Whereas from what I've seen here, it, it seems to be that a lot of, it's, it's, it's a lot more individual. Everybody goes away, does their little bits and then submits it and comes back. Um, so do you change each other's work or do you do that? Or is it basically they say, no, we like that, we'll use that we don't like that we won't use that uh, yeah you're right like it's more of a team thing it's more of an established team thing in America compared to here um, with with mad as hell it's it's really sort of Sean Sean's creative vision so he was basically you know you'd, you'd write something and you'd show it to him and if he liked it then he'd do it like there was there was no yeah, like, you know, he was the guy who made the decision, and fair enough, because it's his show. It's, it's, yeah. it's his show, <laughs> and that's the thing, I mean, it, because it is his show, I mean, it, whatever happens, they're not going to blame you. I mean, they're gonna, if it's not funny, they're going to blame him. So do they, cha do they change, did you get much stuff through that, um, and did he change much, it, much in the scripts? Um, yeah, I got a few things in. Um, yeah, like, everything, everything was, ended up being different to how the right, you know, they're just, the, that's the natural thing that happens with a topical show, the, the news changes, you write something the next day, it doesn't make any sense anymore because something else has happened in the news, so it was, it's constantly changing, so. It is a yeah. problem with those shows, if you look at back things like Not the Nine O'Clock News, which, you know, back in its day we thought was hilariously funny and you watch it now and you go, huh? Yeah. Um, whereas you can watch something like Monty Python and it just it lives on and is funny forever because it's, it's, it is literally timeless. It's just silly and yeah. funny. It's not, it's not satirical. That's the thing. Satir satire is about the here and now, isn't it? Yeah. I think with uh, Monty Python as well, they, they weren't making one show a week. They'd spent six months making six or eight episodes. So they couldn't be too topical because they wouldn't even make sense, you know, in 1969. They make it at the start of the year, it airs at the end of the year, it's going to be different news. So they sort of kept it more timeless so it would last a little longer. Also mentioned that you've had, got a web series. I mean, that's something that's coming up and becoming more, uh, more popular, becoming more viewed. And in fact, uh, it was seen at uh, the 2014 LA Web Festival. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. Um, web series, it's the way of the future. You should get into it. We might do that Actually, one Actually, maybe we're on, I think we're on YouTube right now. We might be. Yeah. Who knows? Hello. Um, but yeah, I do a web series, did a web series, still do it. We never finished. Um, called Too Easy. I do it with a guy called Alex Williamson, who um, he's got quite a big presence on YouTube. Uh, he's the loosest Aussie bloke. If you've ever seen those clips, you know, have you seen them? No, I miss, I miss okay, that. Okay, right. Yeah, I mean, the YouTube is something magical and mystical to me. I mean, I'm over 50, David. I've got okay, no idea right. what it, any of this stuff is talking Whatever you're talking about, I've got no idea. Okay, well, uh, I'll, I'll explain it a little more for you. <laughs> so, yeah, Too Easy it was like a, a sitcom with um, me playing a nerd and Alex playing a jock. So we're basically playing ourselves. And uh, we, live to, we live with each other and it's sort of, you know, our daily struggles of day-to-day -day life in a share house and um, we sort of made that in Adelaide just before I moved to Melbourne and then for a while there whenever I went back to visit we'd shoot a couple more episodes and um, yeah it's just got a bit of a following on YouTube we submitted it to the the LA web fest which is the largest web series festival in the world and uh, we um, we won five awards well, there you but, go. Yeah, but uh, well, let me put it into context. The <laughs> LA Web Fest, they had, this year they had something like 370 web series that they showed. They gave out about a thousand awards, <laughs> so so, so ev I, every series won like at least one award. So it's like the Logies, really. Yeah, more or less. Except it's like it's like Except it's like the, it's like the Logies if every show won one. Ten Logies. Oh, well, I, I, I don't know. I haven't been able to sit through the Logies for years now. I thought it was at that stage now, where every, where every every show on Australian television won a Logie. I mean, we've got five of them already. I mean, you know, I don't know what we do with the bloody things, but yeah. If, if you're watching well, at home and you'd like a Logie, let us know because you know they just they get under the trip over the cat falls over them. It's it's embarrassing, really. So uh, once you so you're going to continue with the web series or you're going to do new ones? Well, we've um we've shot. Well, there's 12 episodes on YouTube. We, we, there are three that we've shot more than two years ago that haven't been edited yet. So every time I see Alex, I keep bugging him to, you know, when are you going to, when are you going to edit those those episodes? You know, they're just sitting there, and he's like, yeah, 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 I'll get to it. So 
Uh, well, there's at least three that we've that are coming soon. I've been saying they be coming soon for two years, uh, but they're, they're coming soon. Mm -hmm. Well, we look, we certainly look forward to that. And also, you've, you've done some, you've done plenty of radio. I mean, you're a multimedia machine, really. You've worked with a lot of interesting people on radio. I was, uh, we've seen uh, you talked about by people like Rex Hunt. I mean, what's Rex like to work with? I mean, he's a, he, there's a character. Yeah, oh, he's great. Um, I still work with him. He's um, he's a AFL commentator uh, for Croc Media. Um, so yeah, they, they do. For the viewers at home, if you don't know, AFL is sort of a, a regional curiosity, much loved by the simple folk. So, the, so what? So, so you go. With the, so you're basically his panel operator. I mean, do you yeah. get? Is it a Graham Kennedy like thing? Do you, does he drag you on at times? You manage to get your head on at times, uh, as it were. I've I've never been on air. I've been referred to on air, but uh, it's sort of an unwritten rule: panel operators aren't allowed on air. I just press the buttons and put the show to air, and uh, occasionally, you know. Emram, you know, get referred to, which is which is cool. We also saw on the on the on the the previews before for 31 questions or the the show reel, uh, a Mr. John Blackman. How did you get how did you get Blackers in? Ah, uh, well, that's um, uh, another guy who was working on the show named Antonio. He was the director of season two. And, we know Antonio Anto well. Yes. He used to work on this very show. Is that right? Yes, Antonio. Yes. Good guy. Good. He's very good guy. Good, yes. Good with the graphics. Some uh, fabulous graphic design coming up in season three. Anyway, he he did some work with John Blackman and sort of just said, oh, yeah, I do the, I'm working on this game show on Channel 31. Do you want to you come and you know, make a cameo? And he's like, yeah, sure. So like, he brought Dickie Knee and stuff. And uh, I got to do some shtick with Dickie Knee, which is kind of surreal. Yeah, so well, that would, be, that would be, be, be very bizarre. So coming up in the next season of 31 Questions, do we have any sort of mega celebrity cameos there that you can tell us about? Or do we have to wait and see if it's a surprise? Uh, we, we've mentioned some names here in this interview. One of them is going to be on season three. Well, that's something to look forward yeah. to. And as we say, sometime in June on Channel 31 and, of course, right around Australia and New Zealand as well. Yeah, face television New Zealand. The, the, uh, well, David, thanks for coming in. Best of luck with 31 questions. And no doubt we will see you in future. I mean, you just, the, the, web, the web awards are just a warm-up for your very own collection of Logies. Uh, for now, thanks for coming in and joining us on this edition of In Pit Lane tonight. Oh, thanks very much. And thank you. Uh, coming up in a moment, we're going to have some live music with our band Animal Hands and a whole lot more. You're watching In Pit Lane tonight. Don't go away. We're going to take a short break and be right back. to In Pit Lane tonight. Well, our musical guests tonight are generating a lot of excitement around the traps. They're regulars at most of Melbourne's top venues and they're getting a lot of attention from overseas as well. Part of a long and proud tradition of hard-working, loud, kick-ass Melbourne pub bands who take their music to the world. They've got a new EP coming out, uh, which we've got here. We'll give you details of that a little bit later. But right now, will you please welcome... They're going to come back with two songs, but right now, welcome to the stage, Animal Hands. <laughs> Why you never live up to me, no matter how 
band well who better to interview them than in pit lane's very own director of music manel lewis and if you're wondering who to blame i uh, sorry who to thank for the music on in pit lane every week you're about to meet her ladies and gentlemen manel lewis hi um okay well with nirvana kurt cobain being inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame after 20 years after his death in april a band, you might think Grunge is dead, but a band, this band, have definitely brought it back and we're going to catch up and have a chat to them. How are you? Yeah, good. Pumped. <laughs> now, what were your influences? Obviously, 90s Grunge is an influence, major. Yeah. <laughs> um, hotter version of Courtney Love here. So, <laughs> what, what other influences started this band? Oh, there's, there's heaps. We've, we've all been influenced definitely by the 90s, for sure. Yeah, it's just, you know, you grow up as a teenager and... You know, you, you become a part of a scene and it's just, it keeps you forever. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reviews online have been amazing. Um, I think all the majors have reviewed you. Um, the response to gigs have been amazing. What, what, what's next for Animal House? Well, we're um, getting into the studio again, which is really exciting. Yeah, we're going to do that um, at late June. So we hope to release in August, September. So, yeah, that'll be, that'll be the plan. And then, yeah, just gigging flat out. Hopefully do a tour. Great. Well, the, with your EP, you got, uh, I think it was Gravina, Lindsay Gravina, yeah, who yeah. actually produced Eskimo Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so how did, how did you get him to produce your album? <laughs> EP. Sorry, EP. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of persistent phone calls. <laughs> no, it was, um, yeah, it was just a sound that we just, yeah, we just wanted to have, yeah. It was, uh, you know, you... You listen to, to bands like, you know, Magic Dirt, you, Roland S. Howard, um, yeah, look, Cosmic Psychos, it, you know, it's just, it's one of those things, you've got you to gotta have the experience. <laughs> yeah, well, you guys have a great sound and with the 90s definitely coming back, I think you're filling a niche. You're getting great reviews and airplay overseas in the US and Canada. Are there any chances of a live tour? Are we going to see you worldwide? Are we going to see you famous and be like, you're on in pit lane and now you're bigger than anything? Are you opening for Courtney Love, I heard somebody say. Oh, look, yeah, Veruca Salt, that would be excellent, you know? Like, yeah, um, yeah, whatever, whatever happens, we're going to roll with it. Well, I think the 90s are definitely coming back, so you're definitely in the right <laughs> space for it. We're going to hear another song from you now. What song are we going out with? Oh, this, this one's called uh, Change My Mind. Beautiful. And you can hear more about Animal Hands from their iTunes. I believe you can debut their self-titled album. Yeah. And also their website, which is animalhands.net, yes. I think. Yep. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>
Lane tonight. Well, in the 20 years that C31's been on air, an awful lot's changed. You know, when we started, well, we've been on air for 19 years, and when we started, everything was recorded on SVHS tape with cameras the size of, like, two telephone books that cost the best part of half a year's wage. Now it's all digital, and most of you have more computing power in your pocket right now than we had for a whole broadcast studio. But the way we watch TV is changing, too. You know, when we started C31, it was one of only six available television stations. Now, of course, you can go online and watch thousands of hours of first-run original programming from all over the world. RMITV is soon going to kick off its first major web series with Follies of Youth, a show that follows the fortunes of four good friends in inner city Melbourne as they navigate their way through life in their 20s. But rather than have me explain it, let's talk to one of the men behind it. He's the writer, executive producer and one of the stars of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tony Avard. <laughs> Comfortable, are we? I am very comfortable. Oh, that's cool. Nice. They, they, I'll, you know, I'll hit you up for some dough later. <laughs> now, tell us a bit about... Um, oh, I've just lost my microphone there. I knew something was going going wrong. I'm glad you're excited to speak. I am very excited. So, well, the microphone is anyway. Yeah, wow. the, now, tell us about uh, Follies of Youth. Uh, what what is it, and uh, where did it come from? Uh, Follies of Youth is a uh, is one of my babies, as I like to say, and it uh, it originated out of the concept of um, I finished a screenwriting diploma at RMIT, and my mentor said, "You need to write a web series. You have a distinctive voice, and uh, network television isn't necessarily going to be." particularly kind to that voice, so you need to write a web series. So I sat down and created a program uh, that is issue-based, because I write issue-based, uh, that's my writing is issue-based, and decided that the best way to get it done is to do a youth-oriented thing. So I've done, yeah, these four best friends in their 20s dealing with life. I like to sort of say that it's the construct of um, those things we watch on television when they get real. So if you've spent your life watching Grey's Anatomy and people having heart attacks, then when your father has a heart attack, life gets a little bit realer than just simply watching it on television. So you, you're obviously one of the four. Tell us about, about, about your character. What's the character you play? Uh, my character is Jude and he's a 28-year-old uh, flamboyant camp gay male. I wonder where I got that from. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> that, well, yeah. <laughs> Crazy ideas. But, um, and he basically, it's, it, it sort of, it revolves around him. Uh, he works for a HIV non-for-profit and it's about him discussing, through that character we discuss the um, stigma of HIV and the, in my mind, the stupidity of people still after um, the 80s. They still have very closed minds about HIV. And he has also been um, sexually um, abused for three years when he was a teenager. So it's his story is very much about him discovering um, how to live life with a partner and dealing with those things because he's 
finally over the hurdle of accepting and moving through his sexual assault. It, it, it sounds like when you, when you describe it like that, it sounds like it's you know it's, it's pretty pretty waiting go, waiting going. I mean, yeah. is there any room for laughs? No, in there's this? heaps of laughs because it's me. No, it's there's heaps of laughs. It's uh, very much um, tonally. I often say it's sort of like Mash, where we're dealing with real subject matters, um, but with a with a light on touch. Um, also, uh, very similar to the 90s sitcom Roseanne, where they were able to deal with a l range of um, weighty topics, but with a bit of a light humour element, because personally in my life experience, if you can't laugh at it, then you're just going to cry, so you may as well laugh. So, yeah. So who were the other three people involved in the, in the leads? Um, so then there's um, Grace Trebellia, who plays Jean, and Jean's story arc is very much one of... Um, Again, her, she's a travel agent with a girlfriend and she's a lesbian, so she's funky. She's like Alan. Very exciting. And, um, yeah. A lesbian's very fashionable now. I mean, do you I guys just, get jealous and say, um, you're like, oh, yeah, let, yeah. I just, it's not fair. It's not, well, you know, I can't talk. We've got Neil Patrick Harris on my side, so I'm sort of like, Aaron, Alan, Neil Patrick Harris, you're no, right. Yeah, but Neil yeah. Patrick Harris is in another dimension. I mean, you know, well, he's, you know. he's not, you know, I mean, I'd turn for Neil Patrick Harris. Well, so, I mean, you good, know. well, Doogie Howser, who wouldn't really, but no, that's wrong, actually. No, of course, um, yes, it is. Um, Anyone's many, watching it, wrong, wrong, wrong. Very wrong. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, but, yeah, so her story arc is very much about um, her dealing with... Um, rediscovering herself because I think it's um, life. Do we tend to think we know who we are and then life throws a curveball, um, And that's very much Jean's story. And then there's Charlie, who is played by the other executive producer, um, Christine Michelle is her stage name. And she, um, and her story arc is about being stuck in a relationship uh, from high school and the pitfalls and the wonderful, but also the pitfalls of something like that. Falling in love with someone at 14 doesn't mean you necessarily love them at 24 or 28 or 30. Um, and then there is Viv, who is played by Shumi Lochner, and she is a parent to everybody and slightly anal retentive, and she needs to learn to loosen up and to let the, the world sort of come to her and not overthink and not overanalyze. So they're sort of the main story arcs and throughout all of these processes these four friends stick together and that's essentially it. Yeah. Well we'll ask you more about it at the moment, we'll take a break in a moment but we'll, we'll come back after the break and we'll talk about uh, exactly you know, why a web series and how people can watch and also how people can get involved in helping to fund it as well because you've got a Kickstarter campaign mm -hmm. at the moment so let's talk about that. That's when we come back, you're watching In Pit Lane um, tonight when we get back more from Tony Avard and we'll be talking more about the Follies of Youth. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Back to In Pit Lane tonight, and we're joined in the studio by the uh, producer, writer, and one of the stars of Follies of Youth. He is Tony Evard. And Tony, we spoke about the. Uh, this is a very personal sort of show that you, you're doing right now. Has it been, has it been hard? Uh, yeah, it has. It has been quite difficult to uh, plod through. I um, am sort of known to write based on my personal life, so it's sort of I'm getting better at it as I've progressed. But it, yeah, there has been some, uh, luckily my co-executive producer, Christine de Havilland, has really been my um, rock because there have been many four hour co phone conversations where I've gone, why am I doing this? This is stupid. And then she's calmed me down and said, you want to be Oprah, you have to do this. So yeah. Do you want to be Oprah? I do. Every girl wants I, to be oh, Oprah. Absolutely. I love Harpo, God knows I do, but I kill him dead before I let him beat me. <laughs> I got a whole colour purple thing going, I'm very excited. <laughs> so is that, is that good to have somebody like that when you're doing something so intensely personal? Is it good to have someone who can stand back from it a bit and say, whoa, whoa, hang on, that too much, too little, or bring it out? No, absolutely. She's, um, I think if she wasn't there, it would have, the towel would have been thrown in long, long ago. I wrote a play a couple of years ago that was intensely personal and um, she was the one pushing me to do it and she going, no, this will be great. And it was great personal growth and I sort of was able to leave things behind. Um, this one is a lot fresher and a lot um, more sort of intense and having her there going, this will be really good in the long run and we're going to be helping people. We're trying to start conversations. We're trying to, you know, better the world in a fun, light way. 
um, it makes me go, yeah, okay, I can do this. This is exactly on point. We spoke with David before. We mentioned about you know, getting paid for these things. We do all this sort of on Channel 31 and RMI TV for love. You've got the support of RMI TV, but you're also obviously looking for finance. Well, you're going through Kickstarter. Tell me, how is that working? Um, look, it's sort of it's a, it's our own little experiment. We thought, well, we'll give Kickstarter a bit of a go. We're asking for around two thousand dollars just to help with the the food and the, like just the general runnings of the shoots, um, just so we can sort of. It's a thank you in a way for the cast and the crew and the, and stuff, just so it runs a lot smoother. Um, because um, I mean, we're funding it ourselves. So, as, and if people are interested in the topics of sexual assault and HIV and wanting to help start conversations, then the Kickstarter is a great way to uh, donate. Any every dollar counts, and we'll be very very grateful and hopefully starting yeah conversations. So, what's the format in terms of how long does each episode run for? How many episodes are you planning to do? Um, we're planning to do anywhere from thirty to forty episodes. We've got two wow. series. Uh, yes, we've got two series, and it's uh, six to ten minute episodes. Um, and. That's basically it. When we're doing too intensive and then with the possibility of more, but we're pretty sure that this story will be told um, very succinctly in these two seasons. And, and that, I suppose, is the advantage of doing things on the web nowadays. You're not in that construct anymore of having to do 13 half-hour episodes of something. Something, yeah. It, the story goes as long as the story needs to go and as long as you want to keep doing it. Yes, exactly. And it's very much... And that's been the glory of it. It's very much, I want to tell this story and for this, you know, like... We want to tell the sexual assault story because in the media it's very much about um, glorifying it and if there's if you're a female actor and there's nothing for you to do on the show oh we'll just rape her so whereas we're trying to go no there's actually a lot more detail to it so that, that was the running cool. joke with indigenous actresses yes. throughout the yes. 70s yeah yes. i was like yes. justine saunders it's like you know who, who raised me this time yeah exactly yeah. and it's a similar thing with the gay characters it's sort of like they are more than hairdressers um, and they are more than the nosy neighbours. So we're trying to spread that out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck with it. It's, a, it's an ambitious project and it's one that uh, we look forward to seeing uh, how it turns out in the... in the. When, do you, when are you hoping to get the first episodes on air? Um, we're hoping to do that in the end of September, beginning of October. OK, we look forward to it. Um, go to the Kickstarter uh, project. We'll put, a link in the, uh, we'll put a link in the show notes for you. But for now, uh, best of luck with it. Tony Abbott, thanks for joining us on In Pit Lane tonight. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching at home once again. Thank you to our guests once again. Please thank David M. Green, Tony Abbott, In Pit Lane's very own Manel Lewis and Philip Taylor. Now, remember, if you'd like to contact us here on In Pit Lane and CBS, look, it's still not too late. I mean, that whole sort of Steve Colbert thing is not set in concrete. All you have to do is via In Pit Mail at the show at inpitlane.com. You can visit our website, inpitlane.com. Please like our Facebook page. I don't want to plead, but please like our Facebook page. And, of course, we're on Twitter for all you tweeters out there. So remember that if you're in Melbourne, In Pit Lane's on every Wednesday night at 9 30 on C31 until the end of May. But to take us out tonight from this special edition of the show, we're joined once again by our band Animal Hands. And until we see you again, congratulations C31 on 20 fabulous years. Thank you, RMI TV. And from all of us here at In Pit Lane, always remember, live TV is dangerous. Let's keep it that way. Good night. <laughs>